Today we're looking at the Eastern Woodland People. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com for resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. The Eastern Woodland Peoples inhabited a large area from the Atlantic Ocean west to the Great Plains and from the Great Lakes down to the Gulf of Mexico. There is evidence that as early as 800 BC, these native people lived in what is today the eastern part of the United States. This region was known for its large, vast forest, giving these people the title Eastern Woodland Peoples. There were several different major groups of eastern woodland people, including the Iroquois, Algonquin, Cherokee, and Mound Builders, which I discussed in the Mississippians video if you want to check out that video. But among the eastern woodland people, they shared a similar culture that relied on the forest for all of their needs. They hunted and ate deer, rabbits, squirrels, birds, and even bear. They hollowed out fallen trees to make canoes and use them to fish. They also ate various foods found in the forest, such as nuts and berries. They did develop some agriculture growing corn, beans, and squash, sometimes referred to as the Three Sisters. The reason these crops are considered to be siblings is because Native Americans developed an ingenious system of planting all three together. The corn stalks provided something for bean vines to climb up and gave them support. The beans would then actually fertilize the soil for the corn and the squash, while the squash's broad spiny leaves would help protect the beans from animals. Now, different from other native civilizations, they did not have to build irrigation systems to get water to their crops, as the eastern part of the continent had adequate rainfall to support agriculture. They constructed houses from wood, tree bark, grass, and leaves. One type of shelter they built were wigwams, which were built by bending young tree saplings over to form basically a dome of trees and limbs. On top of that, they would strip bark from trees and, and then place it over the wigwam and, fi and then finally place dried grass on the roof, almost like a thatched roof. Another common shelter was the longhouse, which was similar in construction to the wigwam. However, as the name suggests, it was an elongated version in which there were several bunk beds made from wood and, tr and deer skin so that more people could fit inside one shelter. Although they shared similar culture and practices, they actually spoke several different languages which differentiated them. Some of the major language groups were the Iroquoian and Algonquin languages. The Iroquois were the major Native American group that occupied what today would be the northeastern United States, focused in what today would be the state of New York. There were several different tribes within the Iroquois culture. Five tribes, the Senecas, Onondagas, Oneidas, Cayuga, and Mohawks all lived in close proximity and actually fought with each other rather frequently. Somewhere in the late 1500s, these tribes came together to form the Iroquois League, in which each tribe maintained their own individual leadership, but did come together in one council to work together. This league allowed the Iroquois to withstand invasion and threats from neighboring tribes. Although they still fought with each other from time to time, many historians credit the Iroquois League as being the earliest foundation of American democracy, which would come years later. The Algonquin were another native group identified by the Algonquin language they spoke. They lived in the northeast, primarily along the eastern seaboard, but also some inland areas. Being located along the coast, their culture very much depended on fishing as a primary food source. Some Algonquin tribes extended all the way to present-day Virginia. Some of the tribes included within the Algonquin were the Wampanoag, Massachusetts, Pequot, Powhatan, and Mohican. The Cherokee lived primarily in what is today Tennessee and Georgia. Again, they had a similar culture to other eastern woodland groups. The Cherokee created a very sophisticated civilization as they developed their own laws, uh, system of government, and even had schools. Additionally, unlike other native peoples, the Cherokee developed their own system of writing called talking leaves. Now, unlike the, the English alphabet with 26 characters, the Cherokee alphabet actually had 86 characters. Throughout the late 1700s and 1800s, more and more Americans began to move into the Cherokee's land, and eventually the Cherokee were forced off their land in the 1830s during the Trail of Tears. So, with that, 
Hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.